What's up, Internet? What's going on? It's a Monday. It's a Monday. What is going on? What is happening, everybody? What is going on in your house? What's going on in your not house? What's going on in your work? What's going on wherever you are in the world? Oh, I forgot to click the thing over here. Look out, buddy. Look out, little buddies. Happy Monday, everybody. I'm just getting warmed up. I'm just getting warmed up, y'all. I'm just getting warmed up because it's Monday. <laughs> How funny is that? I just, uh, I just read Joel Gillett's comment right there. Saying fireworks for 15k, 15,000 subscribers is coming up. So I went to go check the subscriber count, and I refreshed it, and it went down. <laughs> How funny is that? Uh, that's just that's just a funny thing that happens sometimes on Monday. How's everybody doing? Let's check in here. Who was first to the chat today? Wushu Jimmy Brown. Nice work, Wushu. Wushu, Jiminy Brown coming in first today. I like it. Followed by Nick's Fish Room and Frank Dominguez. Uh, One Men Aquarius is here. Jad Orzy's here. Dan Squires. What's going on? Jad Orzy becoming a new a new big contributor to the old channel here. I like it. I like that. I like seeing the new faces and, and showing up regularly. I like that. That's super cool. If you got the chance and if you can, cool. If not... Always like to see you guys in the comments after the fact. I like to see that too. So word up to anybody out there that if you're like, hey, I'm watching this a week later because I didn't have time, you know, because sometimes you just don't have time. I like to see you in the comments. I'll throw a comment up there. Just be like, hey, I'm a week late, but I'm here. That's good too. Uh, and uh, Charlie is here. Oh, Charlie has shortened his name to just... Charlie. Rocky's Rocky is here. What's going on? I just realized I'm wearing my shoes, you guys, which is awkward because I don't normally do that. Hold on a second. I have this. I don't have a, uh, I don't have a PewDiePie chair here. I don't have a, a super comfy PewDiePie chair here. So I normally do the thing where I sit on my foot and I just realized I'm sitting on my shoe and I didn't like that very much. But speaking of my shoes, I got myself some new shoelaces yesterday. I'm very excited. I'm very excited about shoelaces. And I'm very excited about shoes that actually last uh, longer than the shoelaces. Isn't that cool? Isn't that a delightful little thing? Uh, these shoes have been whole. I have to admit, these uh, rock climbing approach shoes probably going to get myself another pair of them. They are holding up really well to the torment that I put on my shoes and I'm liking how long they lasted for 60 60 bucks. I think they were 60 bucks on sale. I think they're normally like a lot more than that, but uh I keep an I keep track on the Amazon. You know what I mean? I keep track on Amazon when things go on sale and I'm like, "Dude, boom, let's do this thing." You know? So that's a uh, I guess that's just a, a personal note. Shoe choices, I guess. Uh, but Gillett was talking about uh, 15K. We are getting close to 15,000 subscribers, and uh, that's all thanks to you guys sharing it out, uh, sharing the love, letting people know, hey, there's this little corner of the Internet where we talk about fish tanks, we talk about life, liberty, the pursuit of, uh, well, happiness, you know? 
right? Happiness. Uh, we talk about a lot of things here. We answer questions. Uh, we take. Uh, we don't take callers, and we very rarely have guests. It's normally just me yammering on about stuff and uh, trying to have a dialogue with you guys, the subscribers, um, which are currently currently have the name the Oceaneers, which I think we're going to stick to the Oceaneers. I, I like it. I just think it just has such a strong ring. And, uh, and it's uh, ultimately, I'm pretty much just into it. Um, speaking of the Oceaneers, a couple of new Oceaneers coming in today and over the weekend. And by the way, those of you that are wondering what happened this weekend, you know, like you follow on Facebook and that kind of stuff. Um, yes, we went on a trip and I will definitely give you guys a recap of uh, the... Uh, recap of the San Francisco trip. Uh, we went to San Francisco and back, you know, so if you're here for the early show on Friday, you know, we had to do the early show because, uh, we were heading out to the, uh, airport to go down to San Francisco and, you know, that's just, uh, oh, to those of you that were wondering where that trip came from, uh, just a quick recap. Uh, on Friday, I talked about the fact that uh, Vicky and I were going to go do a charity event this year, and we had bought our tickets for it, right? Uh, but now my lovely partner is pregnant with our first baby, my first baby, her first baby, everybody's first baby as far as we're concerned here. Biddy Brown doesn't have any babies. Mr. Chip's might who knows is mr chips a father mr chips are you a daddy i don't know i don't know um but so we couldn't do that charity event because it involved a uh, pretty grueling mud run type situation and you know not that it's impossible for a pregnant lady to do that kind of stuff but um just seemed you know, with just like the actual, like going through the actual mud puddles and all that kind of crazy stuff that it was like, you know, they, they don't advise it. You know, they, they, even the people that put on the mud run, they're like, we don't advise pregnant ladies to be on this. Um, although they let you, if you want, uh, it just didn't seem like a great idea, possible risk for infection or injury or any of that kind of stuff. It was just, didn't seem like a great idea, so we just ended up donating to the charity and donated our actual mud run tickets. So there's a couple of people that are able to go that may, that weren't able to go before. Um, so that worked out, but then we had these plane tickets. Like, what are we going to do? Um, and we had to use them, otherwise they were just going to disappear. <coughs> now, State of the Union address says that, like, Vicky only gets a certain amount of time for... Um, what do you call that? Maternity leave, right? And we want to be able to extend her maternity leave as much as possible. Um, so we're going to have to use some of uh, Vicky's vacation time and, and whatnot to supplement the, the uh, maternity leave time. And uh, so we didn't want to use any of her paid time off. So we just took those plane tickets we flew down to San Francisco Friday night and we were there all day Saturday and then we we're back Sunday. So, uh, kind of a whirlwind trip, tried to fit it all in. And, uh, I have to say for the amount of time that we had, um, we did get a lot. Um, we did get a lot done. We went to a lot of stuff and, um, went on tours. We went to Alcatraz, we went to some fish stores, we went to some awesome restaurants, uh, we went on a bus tour that, that went super early. We went all around town, got pictures of, uh, we got pictures and footage of the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, um, what is it? Hey, Ashbury, we went up there, uh, went all around. So we did uh, as much as we could, like in a 24 hour period. And I have to say it was quite fun. Uh, luckily we had some cool, some of awesome fish fam hosts with the uh, Zenzo from Tazawa Tanks. If you haven't, um, checked out Tazawa Tanks, I would, I would definitely get on that. I love his videos and I love that guy. He's a great dude. Uh, he and his wife, fantastic hosts, took us out to some local digs. Um, uh, we were able to, uh, we ate way too much food. I'll, I'll tell you that. Um, and uh, we did get some ice cream. We didn't get to we didn't get to make it to Ghirardelli Square. To those of you that were wondering um, about that, we didn't make it there for the chocolate because we were supposed to do that Friday night. Um, 
and all of our our our, <laughs> our flight and everything got completely um, sidebarred by delays and whatnot, which I have to admit were very frustrating for me uh, because you know it's 2018 and they're like, well. You know, these flights to San Francisco, they always have these, these, these crazy delays because, you know, like the airport's weird and it's like windy and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, I kind of am just like, look, it's 2018. If this is a normal thing, why haven't you fixed it? Why haven't you figured it out? Why haven't you figured out some kind of solution at this point? Um, and, of course, the airline that we were on just purchased another airline for a billion dollars. So clearly, you know, it's not like this industry is doing poorly or like the airport is doing poorly or any of that kind of stuff. It's just like, figure it out, man. Like, there's no reason at this point that there isn't like a plan B. You know what I mean? Like, just, oh, it's windy in San Francisco again, so we're going to fly to the airport nearest to it or something. And, uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. But no, they just leave the airplanes on the ground and then everything's just all out of whack because of that, I, I don't know. It just seems super weird to me that they don't, and they haven't figured it out. And so that was super frustrating because we were supposed to get in, we were supposed to land at, um, and my apologies if I get this wrong, but we were supposed to land at eight fifteen. that would have given us, um, 45 minutes to drive into town, get to the hotel, which would have put it around nine o'clock, nine thirty. Let's say, let's say even on the on the outside, it would have been nine thirty, even ten o'clock. Ten o'clock would have been early enough um, to still go to like Ghirardelli Square because they're open till eleven o'clock at night. So we we just kept thinking like, okay, you know, it got delayed a little bit, not that big of a deal. Eh. Um, so. Uh, but needless to say, it kept getting delayed, kept getting delayed. And we did not get in until one 30 at night. Um, which sort of just means most things are closed by that point, uh, which kind of sucks. Uh, but it's just a reality of travel that you just got to deal with that stuff. And, you know, a lot of people like sent me things like, here's an inspirational quote about, um, you know, how traveling is difficult sometimes and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, but get it together, man. I mean, uh, this is like a known issue. As a matter of fact, like the seat I had on the airplane, I was sitting right next to a worker who worked for the airline that was like, yes, every Friday I have to catch this flight back to San Francisco, uh, because she was up in Seattle for training every week and had to catch the flight back, uh, to San Francisco from Seattle every week. And she goes, every week this week, every single time, which is, she said she'd done it nine weeks in a row, every single time the flight had been delayed and they blamed it on San Francisco every single time, which seems is, is you know, which just makes a track record that like this is happening all of the time. Like, why haven't you figured out a plan B? I, I don't know. That's just the thing that kind of gets me uh, about the whole situation is like, why didn't they, f why didn't they just figure out another way to like get this done? You know what I mean? Like make it happen so that, you know, if the delay is a half an hour, 45 minutes because of something like, okay, I get it. But four hour delay because the winds were nine miles an hour, like nine mile an hour wind is not a lot. You know, um, you know, and to, I, as uh, Dan Squire is asking you a free upgrade. No, we didn't get a free upgrade. We did not get a free upgrade. We got a, we got a coupon, right? For future tickets that we're going to purchase, which I feel is almost like the worst way to accommodate people having had a bad experience because it's like, oh, buy more stuff from us, but we'll just give you the more stuff at a sale price. You know, um, it wasn't like a, it wasn't a complimentary ticket, you know, cause we had two tickets. So it's like, you know, maybe you get one free ticket if you buy one or something like that. But no, it was just a hundred bucks off future plane tickets, which is just kind of, lame you know what i mean so 
I, I I don't know. I just always feel like that's like the worst accommodation uh, that uh, that. So like as you guys know, I'm in the re- I was in the restaurant business forever. You know, I spent basically 20 years in the restaurant business. That would be like, oh, you know, um, you know, uh, what's the, what's the word? Uh, you know, oh, your you know your dinner was completely messed up. Guess what? We'll give you a coupon for the next time you come back. Right? That I don't know. I, I don't know if that would be a good way to go about operating your business. Is that just like, oh, we completely screwed it up this time. But the next time you buy stuff from us, it will be at a cheaper price. <laughs> Stupid. You know, and uh, it realistically was one of those things that... Um, it's one of those things that just a little bit lame, not a big deal. But of course, then we get in... Um, so here's what's weird. So we stayed at a Holiday Inn, right? That's like down on the wharf, you know. So we were really close to all of the stuff that we wanted to uh, to go to. Like we could just walk there like super quick. I mean, it was like an eight minute walk to Ghirardelli Square, right? Um, like you get down to the pier and like five minutes walking you get like right down to the pier so that was super cool but the funny thing is is that there is two holiday in express uh, two holiday inns that are like two blocks apart right so it's not super far or anything like that but one's a holiday Inn express and the other one's a holiday in regular right we got dropped off at the holiday Inn express which we were not staying at we were actually staying at the regular holiday inn and, you know, of course, the uh, Uber guy drives up. No big deal. Whatever. He just dropped us off at the Holiday Inn. We thought we were at the right one. But we go in there, and then it's like, oh, I'm sorry. You don't have a reservation for a room. And we're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and... Uh, so it definitely uh, was kind of interesting because, you know, the, the guy that worked the counter there was like, are you sure you're not staying at the other one? And we're like, I don't. There's another one. <laughs> now, to give you an idea of um, this part of town, this part of town is um, that part of town is fairly excited with the nightlife, you know what I mean? Um, if you know what I'm saying, like there's a lot of dance clubs, a lot of bars, a lot of shenanigans in the evening going on. Um, and that I'm there, of course, with my pregnant spouse and myself. Uh, it's late. We're both really tired. And now it's 1.30 in the morning and we got to go walking to go find another, the other hotel that we're supposed to be staying at it's sort of like oh okay this is great but uh luckily without incident incident it wasn't a big deal we just walked up found the place got in there but then the story gets a little more ridiculous because for some reason they reserved us a room even though our reservation said one king size bed we got in there and there's two doubles but, uh, you know, Vicky was super wiped out. I was wiped out, too. Uh, and I was like, you know what? We got to go down and make sure we get the right room. But she was like, you know what? I, 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 don't, I, I don't have any time for it. It's ridiculous. Uh, so then, of course, we open the window and we get the view of the alley, right? So it's kind of like, okay, well, I guess this is where the window looks. Not a big deal. But... This whole double, two double bed situation um, would be fantastic if it was like Corey and myself traveling, but it's not all that great um, with Vicky, right? <laughs> but um, we figured that out. <coughs> Excuse me. But we figured that out, and then uh, then things started getting real interesting. Because as it turns out, this part of town, the... Um, I'm not sure what time the bar time is, but everyone pours out of there um, all at the same time, which uh, is apparently somewhere between the hours of 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock a.m. Now, 
I don't know if anybody out there is familiar with most of the crowd that stays until uh, closing time at the bar, but most of them have had uh, quite a few libations. You know what I mean? The the barley pops and things like that. And uh, they're a little bit excited. They're a little bit excitable, okay? Which means they're yelling and screaming in the alley, which <laughs> the window faces. So yours truly right here kept waking up because there were a lot of screaming and yelling going on, which naturally makes me think, oh my gosh, what's going on? I got to get up and protect my spouse. Now, luckily, we were on, like, the fourth floor, so I don't think anybody was uh, trying to attack, as it were, because they would have to Spider-Man pretty high up the wall to try and get to us. But uh, it was kind of over and over again, kept waking up, and uh, finally, you know, it kind of died down, I think, at some point in time. So a lot of them, as Gillett was asking, were they screaming surprises? Uh, it was more vulgar than the surprises and um, a lot more angry. You know, a lot of angry yelling, you know, that kind of stuff. Now, that was on the first night. We got the hotel room figured out. We moved to a different location in the building. <sighs> and the stories shall continue about trying to sleep for at least a couple more minutes here. Uh, because now we got the new bed. We got a fantastic room. Totally great. Everything's totally cool with it. Not a big deal. But... So the screaming and yelling the second night was probably twice as bad. I don't know. Maybe the weather was nicer out, so maybe a few few, few more barley pops were consumed. Maybe it's a little different Saturday to Friday, but it was very, very exciting with a lot of people doing burnouts in their, in their cars out on the street. Uh, a lot of yelling and fighting. Um, I did wake up again because there was a lot of screaming a lot of fighting i saw a young gal uh throw her high heel shoe right at someone's face from four stories up um and was quite ridiculous there was a lot going on i saw a guy push over a dumpster it, i think he was i think he was pretty much uh, completely aghast at at uh, the inappropriate use of footwear, I believe. I believe is what he was excited for. Um, and he decided to, you know, in that moment that he decided to display his feats of strength. You know, I think he's been spend, spending some time at the gym. Definitely wanted to show off, let people know. Boy, howdy, can I do some power squats. So he kind of squatted down, flipped over a big old dumpster into the street. And I think by this point, all this action drove somebody to total madness, right? Because at that point, I said, you know what? Forget it. I, this is just ridiculous. And I just was like, okay, um, I got to go pee, so I'm going to go pee. And I'm just going to go back to sleep. I'm just going to forget about this, right? So... To not get graphic, I basically got into the bathroom and prepared myself for my usual uh, pee, you know. And um, somebody decided to start shooting off a ton of fireworks. I don't even understand it. I don't understand it. How does this follow me around into the world? I, I don't even understand it. I, I don't understand it. Somebody decided to start shooting off fireworks. So I thought my sleepy brain, it's so late i'm so tired from running around all day and you know in my sleepy brain i immediately think that these fireworks is somebody shooting a gun because i saw the i saw the the shoe being thrown there was a burnout going on there was a lot happening so i oh my god so i'm i kind of freaking out I go running back i gotta get to the window And, you know, I'm like, I got to I gotta figure out how to report some kind of crime or uh, I got to get my pants on. Maybe I got to go down there and help somebody out. I don't know. I don't know what I got to do. I'm a little sleepy brained. I'm not 100%. Uh, and then I go and I realize that some jack wagon out there is shooting fireworks off. I think he's trying to disperse the crowd. <laughs> I'm pretty sure his intentions were to disperse the crowd somehow 
And I I don't even know I don't even know how somebody gets to that point in their thought process that like oh boy howdy there's a lot of chaos going on outside. You know what I should do? I should add in some fireworks right now. I think that's exactly what the doctor ordered. And um you know, it was pretty crazy with that and uh you know, it was funny cuz Vicky woke up and I, you know cuz I was like, "Oh my god, Somebody shooting a gun. And she's like, it's fireworks, you idiot. It just immediately. I mean, it just goes to show you like how smart Vicky is. She just she just knows. I'm I'm a, I'm just thinking the worst. Um mainly because I saw a lot of the craziness that was going on um you know, moments before that. And uh, you know, so I, I, I of course am naturally just thinking the worst. But Vicky wakes up and she's like, No, that's fireworks. But the first one the first fireworks that went off they were going in a pacing that was not fireworks. It was like pop, 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 you know, it was going in the pacing of normally how like untrained people shoot guns. You know what I mean? Um, so that's kind of what I thought was going on. And, uh, then of course the second round of fireworks was like pop, 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 you know, it was totally fireworks sound. So, I, I'm thinking that maybe she didn't hear the first round and the second round she was just saying it was fireworks. But I, I think realistically it's just a testimony to how smart Vicky is because she just kind of already knows what's going on somehow like some kind of wizard. Not 100%. What's a wizard if you're female? Uh, a witch doesn't sound kind. Eh, screw it. She's like a female wizard. That sounds better to me. Well, I guess maybe you could be like the good witch from the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, Vicky. I don't think Vicky's like the good witch or the bad witch. I think she was like the um, the super cool hip witch that didn't even show up for the Wizard of Oz. I think she was like, so what was it? The Wicked Witch of the East, right? Or was it, was it the Wicked Witch of the East? Oh, hold on. Let me see. I got to look this up. Which is of Oz? Which which is uh? Here we go. Okay, so land of Oz, a magical country. Oz consists of four vast quadrants. Okay. Gilligan County, Gilligan Country in the north, Quadling Country in the south, Munchkin Country in the east, and Winky Country in the west. Okay, so we got to think here because we got the Munchkin Country was the wizard was there. What's it? The Wicked Witch of the West? Where? Come on, man, make this easier. Ethnic groups? What is this? Now, come on, now. I bet you somebody's already typed it out in the chat while I'm looking for it. Is she a sorceress from Diablo 2? She might be a sorceress from Diablo 2. Uh, that's one of the few video games that we that Vicky even that Vicky knows about. I, I know a lot about a lot of video games, which is kind of dumb. But um, where? Just give me the witches. That's all I want to know. That's all I put in here. What's the deal? This is like pulling teeth. This is a pretty good show today, guys. I don't know. I don't know if you guys are tuning in for this show. It's pretty darn good. Give me... Oh, here we go. Dorothy and the Witches of Oz. This Okay, this is something. This might work. Um, Dorothy Gale. She's from Kansas. Uh, Wicked Witch of the West. Okay, so the Wicked Witch of the West. So the Wicked Witch is from the West... And I don't know. I can't even. They they are not making this easy to just like kind of run through the list of characters. Well, whatever. I don't know. Vicky's like the cool witch that didn't show up. Because the Wicked Witch is from the West. The Good Witch is from the East. The Wizard is from the North. Is that? Okay. You guys are just. Maybe you guys have got it figured out. Glenda the Good Witch. Yeah, but where's she from, though? 
Because they, they go the north, east, south, and west. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we'll figure it out. So the west and the east were bad. The good witch was from the north. Tuned in for Ludwigia. Stayed for the Oz stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's definitely my show. Here is definitely next level weird. So it, yeah, you know, if you guys like it, cool. If you don't like it, I, that's cool too. I understand. I fully understand. You know, I fully understand the negative comments I get. I, well, I fully understand the negative comments that make sense, where people are like, "Hey, dude, I wanted to like your show, but I don't," and I'm like, "Cool, no problem. Good, good luck. Maybe you'll find a cooler one." Um, but the, you know, of course, those negative comments I don't get. But I did get a really cool comment recently that I was thought was hilariously awesome. I mean, not only was it hilarious, but I also thought it was awesome and. It felt really honest. Like it was a really honest thing. Um, somebody commented. They were like, "They were like, I really didn't like you on first impression. I didn't think you were like that good." Blah blah blah. But now you've become my favorite YouTuber around after having watched some of your stuff. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh man, that's awesome. I like that." Um, where did it go? I don't want to. Okay, here we go. So he said, I have to admit, for some reason, I initially didn't like you by just your first or just by first impression. But after watching just one of your videos completely changed my mind. Probably your favorite YouTuber, <laughs> which is awesome. I'm told that. Thank you, man. I, I'm so cool. I appreciate that. Um, and that's like that feels like that feels like a genuine comment. That feels genuine to me. Dan Squires has a good point. It says, only listen to the negative comments when they're super chats. Yeah, there is a uh, $10 minimum for the negative um, super chats. Like, if you, like, if you want to tell me how much I suck real bad, it's a $10 minimum. I think that's how that works, right? It's not written down, like, in the liner notes or anything like that. But, you know, that's probably just shout out, you know, just shout out. Um, Nisi's asking, why are we talking about my kinfolk? By the way, I'm with the from the north, and jury's out if I'm really the good witch or not. Oh, sneaky. I'm guessing that, um, because the wicked witch was from the west, the east one was wicked also? Like, she was good, but she became, she became wicked, Right? That would mean that Glenda the Good Witch was from the south if the wizard was from the north, right? Does that make sense? I'm guessing that makes sense, and I'm going to have to do some research on this to figure it out. Um, Dank Tank says he just wants shout-outs, lols. No, I, out of the hundreds and hundreds of, of, of comments I get on a regular basis, like, you know, it'd be, it'd be impossible to think of which one comment and then come up with it that would get you the shout out, you know? <laughs> I just think it really would. Nobody noticed that I got more tan in San Francisco, guys. Did you notice that? Nobody's probably watching their screen. It's just me right now. So that's not very entertaining. Although I will admit wholeheartedly, I will admit I tried to put some trinkets over here to try and make the video a little more enticing because I'm, I'm reorganizing my office right now you guys it's a little bit janky in here behind the camera like you guys can't see it but um you guys can't see it right now but uh it's a little bit duct tape and bar bailing wire around here you know what i mean right now uh because i'm reorganizing and um trying to change some things around a little bit you know that's the thing i'm trying to do and uh, so I tried to put a couple of trinkets out here. Maybe you guys would have been like, whoa, look at that. He's got a trinket over there. But I got to stop le leaning on that table because uh, it's moving the camera around. <laughs> okay, Dank Tank says, East was the West's sister. Remember the ru ruby slippers, the house falling into Oz. Oh, East was the West's sister who had become evil with the ruby slippers. And that fell on her, but 
Glenda was okay. Yeah, it was Glenda and Oz and all that kind of stuff. It's a little confusing. It's a little confusing at this point. It's been such a long, long time since I actually read those books, and I, I just kind of jumped into it with the worst amount of research possible, which is, I wouldn't say zero, because uh, I did watch the movie a while ago, <laughs> like a year ago, maybe longer. Um, James Well says the wizard was in the center of the continent, which is in each compass direction. Okay, West and east were wicked, north was good, and south was not pictured, but good. Okay, so let's just say, okay, okay, so the wizard was in the middle, okay, surrounded by two evil and two good. Okay, that makes kind of more sense, although a little bit weird that there's only one dude wizard and then four, I don't know, whatever. Um, and Ozma was the rightful queen of Oz, a witch stole her as a baby, turned her into a boy to hide her, and then she turned back into a girl and escaped. Okay, there's a lot going on here. All right, Gillett says, uh, we just assume the white balance is going weird again. <laughs> That's a good point. Gillett's been here a long time. Gillett has been here long enough to actually remember, oh yeah, the white balance used to go bananas on me on a regular basis whenever I'd switch scenes and stuff but man we have grown past that we have grown past that stage um i don't even know how i even got onto this uh wizard of oz we were trying to figure out which i guess which which one vicky would have been i think she would have been the cool hip one that was just like hey i'm neutral what up yeah i do good and bad what are you doing <laughs> sort of like gandalf yeah vicky would be more like gandalf Hundred thousand years old. Um, let's see here. Okay, well, let's move on. And um, oh, yeah, I guess the whole reason I got to talking about this was because uh, we were talking about the trip last weekend and uh, the oceaneers. I wanted to mention that um, we definitely had some new oceaneers over the weekend. If you guys are wondering, um, you don't have to be a Patreon. Okay, that's the caveat I always try to throw in here and let you guys know. You don't have to be a Patreon in order to be an Oceaneer. You don't. You don't have to. Um, it is much appreciated. Uh, we're currently up to 307 Patreonizers. And a quick shout out to the new Patreonizers on here. Um, uh, <clears throat> I just posted a link there if you wanted to go look at it. Uh, we got Thomas Hansel today. Ryan Fairley, what's up? Keith Hours, always always being awesome. So just shout out to Keith. What up, dude? Um, Chain. Oh, okay. So Chage Baker, name is spelled Chage, but it's actually Sage. Good job on messaging me to let me know that your name is actually pronounced Sage. It's just spelled a little bit differently. Um, shout out to anybody that does that. I, it's total, totally helpful. Um, also, we got Christina A. Davilis. Davilis. Hope I'm saying that right. Andre Saul. Dan Pizer. What's up? Uh, Sarah Baker. Coming in at $1. Fernando Gonzalez. Gary Keith. Catherine Bryan. Brandon Saltanovich, Ian Norris, Wes, just Wes, like Prince, um, Kieran Egan, Kevin Keener, bumping it up. Oh, oh, Kevin Keener. Thanks, my man. Uh, Lord Stark. <laughs> I love that. That's so funny. Uh, Travis Carter coming in a huge contributor at this point, uh, 110 bucks. And a big thanks to um, Keith for, uh, he did the temporary pledge. He just, he bumped up and did 200 bucks last month, which was amazing. That definitely helped uh, keep the bills paid and stuff around here to keep the show rolling. Uh, every dollar counts. I feel like I'm doing a NPR fun drive when I, whenever I talk about this stuff, but it's really the only way to, uh, you know, let people know what's up. Uh, Kurt coming in big, uh, Christopher Clark coming in awesome, Kenny Ortiz, what's up, Brandon Salas, Steve Horton on the first, I'm digging that, uh, oh, that's deleted, hold on, Nikki Depew coming in brand new, Kirsten Hassan, John Gonzalez, Chris Bauman, 
Aquarium Connection, Alex Saval, and Caleb Pittman. Drew Wham, coming in with the Wham. Uh, Pedro Fisk, and Haley Cox. Wow. We got a whole bunch of new Oceaneers kicking in on the Patreon. Uh, I like the Patreon because it's a third-party uh, page. It's a third-party site, which means it doesn't have any affiliation with YouTube, uh, Facebook, or any of that kind of stuff. And uh, it's just how we crowdsource being able to pay the bills, like the internet, um, you know, having to purchase stuff, travel, all this kind of stuff that, that goes on around here. Um, it's just a lot. There's a lot of work that goes in, and that's the thing. If it wasn't for the patronizers like Alvin Alejo, who just showed up. What's up, Alvin? <clears throat> Good to see you. Uh, you guys rolling in and uh, sharing the videos out and all that kind of stuff. Like, if it wasn't for that, we just wouldn't be able to come on here and do this. I just, I just, I just wouldn't. I, it's just the thing. And uh, my huge gratitude to you guys. Um, huge, huge, huge gratitude to you guys. Um, kicking it big time. Dan Squire says if, if he wins the lottery, uh, he's totally making, uh, he's going to totally make me come to his house and clean his tanks. Uh, that offer is open. If anybody wants to fund that, that is one of the things on the Patreon. Uh, that is one of the weird goals on the Patreon or, uh, the, sorry, not the goals, but the level rewards. Um, one of them that's pretty attainable for certain for most people is the producer credit at a hundred dollars a month. Uh, I will make a video, a produced video on your suggestion on what you want it the topic to be. You get to pick the topic, and I will make it. Um, and you can keep doing that every month if you like. The other reward tier is essentially. The 10000 a month mark, which is a lot of money. I get it. I understand it. It's kind of reserved for like Jeff Bezos type characters. <laughs> um, that uh, if you want me to come out and help you with your project, the ten grand a month will just be able to make that happen. Because I'll, I'll, we'll do it. Get some plane tickets and, and roll out. Come help you out. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Try to catch up with the chat here a little bit. It's so awesome to see everybody here. The other Bob Kaler just in. I'll catch the first hour late. Oh, the first half an hour later when you post it. Right on. Uh, Randy Hightower is also a very odd series. It is the the Oz is a whole lot of weirdness when you really get into it. Honestly. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Alyssa Bentley says, oh, my God, do I have to consult my roommate? He's obsessed with The Wizard of Oz. Oh, you might have to. You might have to figure that out. We might need a little breakdown, Alyssa. Uh, Miss Bentley, we might need some help figuring that out. Uh, Fernando Gonzalez says, I became a Patreon last week. Oh, thanks, Fernando. Um, hopefully I shouted you out. Were you in there? I don't remember saying Fernando Gonzalez. Um, wait, what's this thing doing now? What am I doing? Now, what am I doing? Now, hold on a second. Did I say Fernando Gonzalez? Let me see here. Oh, yeah. There you go. Right there. June 10th. Fernando Gonzalez. Thanks, my man. Um, it's just a, it's one of those things that, like, if um, if it was going to take ten grand a month to make this show, like, awesome possum, it's very difficult for us to go to any of the companies out there and try and get stuff uh, funded. Like, it really is. It, it, it's it's incredibly difficult. Um, I've had a lot of meetings of late trying to fund some stuff so that I can get crazy awesome content to you guys. And it has become, even though it's 2018, it is still quite difficult to talk to those guys and, and have it make sense to them. You know, um, to be brutally honest, often... A lot of those characters that I have met, it has not been, it has not been important to them to learn the stuff like social media or online presence or any of that kind of stuff. They, um, they never, um, they just haven't like invested time to learn about it. You know what I mean? It's just a, it's kind of just a different generational thing. And, um, that uh, is just a reality of the deal. So it's becoming a, 
uh, it's a it's a pretty hard sell, and um, you know, also, I mean, not to talk bad about anybody, but some of the companies that I've talked to have um, have specifically uh, posted some iterations or not posted, but mentioned some iteration about uh, certain groups or certain. How's that? How's this go? Not groups, but certain other um, creators have uh, sort of spoiled the waters for some people or some companies, you know. Um, so it'd be going on uh, to a certain degree, and we're just we're just plowing along and working our way through it. And crowdsourcing this kind of stuff is uh, is kind of the big deal. But uh, Dan Squires is asking, will we ever get the hinted cooking show? Uh, I would love to, at some point, start putting together some cooking show stuff. <clears throat> it's just a matter of uh, kind of working out the time and the schedule and the shooting. Uh, and the big thing now is the editing. That's kind of one of the biggest, um, one of the biggest problems because you know I'm the cameraman, I'm the sound guy, I'm the, and I'm gonna put real air quotes around this and even say it just to anybody that's listening to this air quotes talent unquote um I'm, I'm also the editor uh the <laughs> social media guy the, all that kind of stuff so um that's a lot of the workflow that is really really piling up at this point um you know oftentimes i'll edit stuff and then i'm like gosh i really don't like how that's going so i end up having to go back to a reshoot this and that i don't have somebody behind the camera actually operating the camera which is kind of one of the big faux pas like at this point in time um that at the very least if i was like operating the camera all the time i could hand it off to an editor and you know so it's just definitely um it's just uh, the workflow is definitely turning into a big thing at this point and uh we're just kind of uh kicking our can along the the way we go here um and some people out there have been like look I can't Patreon. Uh, I get it. There's an easy way to support. You could either um, get... There's one thing you could do. You could go to the Teespring. You can get t-shirts. You could just use the Amazon links if you buy stuff on Amazon. Um, you're somebody like me who's gearing up to be buying some... some uh, I'm going to be buying some... I'm going to be buying some diapers, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, if you're somebody like me who's going to buy diapers and things like that off of Amazon, you can always go through the Amazon link, right? Um, that's just a free and easy way to support that, like, before you go buy stuff at Amazon, you just go through the portal. You don't have to. Um, and also, one of the things is, is that I typically will post in a video um, the link for uh, Aquarium Co-op stuff, and that just basically tells Corey that I'm sending people over there, you know what I mean? So um, that is a good way to support. Also, uh, as you guys know, um, you know, Corey and I collaborate on stuff, so uh, he's uh, he's been cool enough to um, set up some affiliate links that just kind of tracks uh, what's going on, who's sending people over, and stuff like that. And, um, you know, he's, I also highly recommend their products and stuff. So if you haven't been to Aquarium Co-op, I mean, I know you guys hear me talk about them. Uh, I just really dig those guys. And uh, they do great work. They have really good products. The prices are pretty darn good. And their shipping is, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying it's it's as, as good as Amazon, but it's pretty darn close. And for a small company like that to be that good at it, that's a big deal. That's I, That personally is a big deal. I mean, I don't know if they're in there shipping at midnight like Amazon is sometimes, but it's pretty darn close. I, I've seen I've seen stuff get ordered from there and then sending it out. Um, Foster's Fish says, You Suck at Cooking is hilarious. Yes, You Suck at Cooking is my favorite cooking YouTube channel. A hundred percent. You Suck at Cooking is my favorite, favorite YouTube channel. Uh, Maddie Matherson, I don't think Maddie's necessarily a great chef. I'm sorry to say that. I, I just, from his technique and stuff, I don't I don't see him actually being that great of a chef, but I also haven't seen enough of his stuff, um, to necessarily make a judgment one way or the other. So I'm sort of just kind of 50-50 on Maddie Matherson. I'm like, eh. You know, if I, if a if a new video or something like that pops up, I'm kind of just like, 
eh, yeah, maybe I'll get around to watching it, but um, I'm just just saying that I'm, I'm not that enthusiastic about his stuff. But um, let's see, who's somebody? Who's somebody that has some really good technique? I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. I haven't even thought about like cooking and stuff in a long time. But you suck at cooking is my favorite YouTube cooking channel. That's pretty much exactly. That's pretty much exactly how you do it. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, what's the best budget light out there for a twenty gallon? Um, personally, I would say like the Monster Ray or something like that is is probably the the best budget light I would say that uh, that it's probably one of the best budget lights um yeah I'd say the monster ray is probably the best budget light but you know I know a lot of people have gotten super mad at me recently because I'm like DIYing stuff you can do it it's just long term it's not going to be the great the great way to do it and i know somebody got super mad at me and sent me this huge email about like well people need to learn and i'm like yes that is what my whole point was um the whole big rant i was on about diy stuff is like if you go into it just go into it like you're learning not that you're going to save money or any of that kind of stuff um but realistically the fluval lights are my favorite the 2.0 the 3.0 those both those lights that are out right now, those are my favorite that are out. Uh, I know that they're they're spendy um, to a degree. Like there are a lot more expensive lights out there, like the Ecotec. Um, like the Ecotec is um, super expensive. Oh, Jose says you mean the Stingray, not the Monster Ray. Okay, yeah, maybe the Stingray. I might be the Stingray. I don't know. I get the the rays and all that stuff all confused. So my apologies if I got if I was wrong on the stingray. I've been wrong before. Um, let me find my notes here. Let me. I do have some highlighted. Yeah, the monster ray is fairly expensive. I guess it's like a hundred bucks. But the Fluval has the nano LED now. Um, so in the, in the Fluval, like the 3.0 series, they have the, uh, the nano light now, which is only like 55 bucks. So if you did have like a smaller tank, you know, like a 20 gallon or a 10 gallon or something like that, uh, I feel like that nano light, um, would definitely do what you're looking for. Oh, I guess they're like 75 bucks. Never mind. Um, so maybe that's not budget friendly, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, to be brutally honest with you guys, like I, I never found any budget light that like really stood the test of time, like all that well. And that's really the big issue to me is that that doesn't work out that great as far as a budget goes um realistically because you know you might end up spending like 35 dollars instead of 50 dollars, so you're like i'll save 15 bucks but maybe it breaks in nine months or something um i've gotten definitely like mixed reviews off of those stingrays um i think uh, i think the stingrays I, I've definitely gotten mixed reviews. Like some people hate them, uh, and some people like them. Um, those Nikru lights are terrible. <laughs> I got to play with one. Um, I got to play with one just a little while ago, and uh, those Nikru lights are. I'm gonna be honest with you. Don't spend your money on it, in my opinion. Uh, feel free to do what you like and spend your money on it if you want. I wouldn't. I personally wouldn't use it as a doorstop because the doorstop might catch on fire. The door might catch on fire or something. You know what I mean? So I, I personally wouldn't use those. It's really, 
you know, it's really bad news when you're you're counting on something to work out. And one of the things that I look at is this: is that like, if I spend like thirty five dollars, let's say let's say thirty nine ninety nine versus seventy nine ninety nine, right? So let's say it's forty dollars versus eighty dollars. I buy a light, I install it, I get it going, I get all my plants going. My plants are doing great. Things are going well. I got an established tank. It's something that I take. Um, it's something that I take pictures of. Like I'm posting them on Instagram. I'm posting them on Fiz- Facebook. Um, I'm doing. I'm doing a lot of stuff with this little tank that's doing great. Um, you know, I do a lot of stuff with it that is that is doing really well. Um, and I've also got a lot of inhabitants in there and stuff. Somebody posted the AI prime and I was trying to find, uh, while talking at the same time, how much those lights are. Cause I can't remember. I remember the AI primes being pretty expensive. Um, well, the, here's the mounting arm is $33. How much is the light? Where's the light? Oh, that light's $200. Okay. Um, For $200, that light better be awesome. Um, But the way I look at it is I have a system running. I have some some great plants going. I've got the critters in there, and everybody's doing well. And then something happens to the light, right? Uh, Whether it burns out, it stops working properly, it doesn't come on when the timer sends power to it, you know, whatever. I've I've seen all sorts of stuff happen or like one strip of the LEDs goes out. Um, It's, you know, with the old T5s, it wasn't that big of a deal because you could just kind of go down to, you could just go down to the hardware store and buy parts for it and fix it if you needed to. Um, Or if bulbs went bad, it wasn't that far off to like get bulbs and stuff like that. Um, but you know, with the, the awesome LEDs that are out there now, I really feel, I honestly feel like those Fuval lights are, um, the, the, those three, the Fuval 3.0 lights are in what I would consider the sweet spot of price range for value of what they are. Um, and you get that huge warranty on it. You get a huge warranty on it that they're going to replace it right away. So, um, you know, like if you, and for, okay, so I, I haven't dealt with the warranty stuff at like Petco or PetSmart or any of that stuff. Uh, but if, if one of my lights went out, I could literally email Corey and be like, this one's out. Here's the serial number, blah, blah, blah. And they would like make it right, like right away. Um, and one of the big issues is, is that like, let's say my budget was initially only 40 bucks and that light burns out, I probably don't have a bunch of reserve money for if it does burn out, right? So if I bought something at $40, it burn out, it has no warranty, then I have to buy something again at $40, right? I've already, then I have spent the $80 and I'm, I'm playing either Russian roulette or lottery with this one working throughout the time. And there's nothing quite like fiddling around or like running to the hardware store to buy like a incandescent light or something that could replace it. That's still going to cost money and time too. So, um, I just look at it like I just would save up for the correct one. And man, I like, I know how it is. Like I, I have to save up for stuff and it, I'm super old compared to a lot of people, but I have to save and save and save and save. I finally have saved up uh, enough money to get the macro lens that, uh, uh, I've been wanting for, <laughs> for like six months now. Um, so hopefully I'm going to be able to get that. I'm just waiting on, um, I'm waiting on one thing at this point And, um, and that's mainly like a coupon. I'm waiting on a coupon, uh, in order to go, you know, get that macro lens, but to give you a, a perfect idea, like that macro lens is a thousand dollars, right? And I could get cheaper lenses. I really could. Um, But I'll tell you this. Like, 
with lenses and lights and certain things and getting the, the right quality product that you really need, it's kind of the important way to go that route. Um, you know, over the years, I've used certain tools and stuff that are like knockoff, super cheap. Like you go to Harbor Freight and you get something and you're really going to use it for like one job, right? That's not a big deal. Like that's a perfect opportunity to do something super cheap. Um, you're like, I only need this tool to work for like this one job. I'm going to get it done. And if it lasts longer, then that's just kind of a bonus that I could mess around with it, um, uh, down the road. But let me show you guys, let me show you guys something here. And I want to explain this in terms of actually using two of the, basically the same product from the same, this is even from the same company. Okay. So what we have here is two canon lenses right so you can see here this one's an efs 55 to 250 millimeter <clears throat> excuse me i'm sorry um is this a bad lens no no this is a good lens you guys this is an ef no s okay 24 to 105 that the ef means it's a full frame it basically handles for the bigger framed camera. Now, this <coughs> is cross compatible with the small crop sensor and big crop sensor, right? This lens right here, I bought refurbished for like 500 bucks, right? Now this lens right here can go on both of my cameras. It can go on my crop sensor camera or my big full frame camera, right? This one can go on both. This one can only go on my crop sensor camera and this one was like 199 bucks. Did I get a lot of use out of this? Is this a good lens? Yes, it is a good lens. But this is one of those examples that I spent less because I was like, I wanna get that lens that's what I need for the, the stuff that I'm working on. Um, but now it doesn't, um, it doesn't get use anymore because it doesn't work on my big camera. Um, whereas if I'd bought the 55 250, that was the EF like this one, I could put that on both cameras and I probably would still be using it. So like the Nikru lights and that kind of stuff, they could work, they could do what you need them to do, but they're probably not going to long-term. It's just not gonna like work out that great. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there that are like total snooze fest. This guy's talking about lenses and blah, blah, blah. But I'm trying to get a parallel here of, um, you know, sort of relating that like, look, I, I could get the job done um, with buying some cheaper stuff, but I really do think it, with an LED light, something that should be lasting like 10 years get a good one you know like this lens will last me 20 30 40 years right so will the other lens the only problem is i'm not going to be using the other lens because I, I did buy the cheap one that worked on the crop sensor and i didn't spend the extra money to get the bigger lens that um uh, i would i could potentially end up using um for the rest of my life um, so that's one of the big reasons that I am spending the money. I could get a cheaper lens for the macro stuff that I want to shoot, but I want to be able to use that lens for a really long time. Uh, I want to be able to use it for the rest of my life. And I don't ever want it to be something like this lens that collects a lot of dust, mainly because it's, it's over here a lot. It's just sitting over here. Um, you know, only works on one of my cameras. It doesn't work on both. So it doesn't necessarily make its way into the bag because I'm like, oh, it only works on this one camera, right? So it's just really something to, to look into, you know, just to figure out what you're doing. If you can stay patient and get the right thing, it's just going to be worth it in the long run. Uh, Fishaholic Habit says, how long will it be before people are selling their YouTube channels? Um... I guess technically all YouTube channels are for sale. Um, if there's somebody's YouTube channel you want to buy, approach them with an amount of money and see if they take it. And you could buy a you could buy a YouTube channel. Um, uh, you could buy a uh, 
you could buy a YouTube channel right now. If you have the money, you could buy it from somebody. Um, Crystal Harrison says, hi, Joel. Love your show as always. Just a shout out. Tip of the hat. Crystal, thank you very much. Uh, DMC of the Sea, what's up, man? Long time no see. Glad you're finally catching a stream again. I'm glad to see you, too. Let's see here. Uh, Brenda P says, you get what you pay for. Yeah, it's really one of those things. Um, that's It's really one of those things that um, that I definitely would... Um, would look into is just buying a quality product. It's it's going to be pretty. It's going to be it's going to be a lot better in the long run. Um, Nick's fish room says I play with LED chips and soldering iron. Uh, all my tanks are lit by DIY LED, which is great. You know, if you can invest the time and the money to get all of that together and build a good quality product, that's awesome. Um, I think if if most consumers are kind of looking for something that they can plug in, put on there. And go from that. Um, I, I would just say it's it's kind of in that middle ground area with the with the flu vols. Um, I think like kind of their price points like 120 something like that for the normal size tanks. I, I've only ever bought the four foot ones, you know. So I, I don't know. Those ones are like 180 or something. So it's it's not cheap by any any measure, but um, they really do what they're supposed to do, and and uh, they 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 back it up. Uh, B Weimer is asking, uh, what brand of heater do you recommend? Uh, currently the heaters that I recommend are, let me see if I can't find a link. Let me see if I can't find a link. Um, hold on. Let me get it here. I know it's in here. It's in my, it's in my thing. Uh, no. Let me find one here. Uh, the Eheim Jaeger heaters are my all-time favorite. Um, they are ultimately my all-time, all-time favorite. Ooh. The 300 water is on sale, you guys. I'm freaking out. Oh, and there's even a coupon you can, you can clip. Um, so copy, and I'll paste it right here into the chat. There's a Amazon link. I'll take you right to the um, Eheim heaters. If you can find them cheaper somewhere else, buy them cheaper somewhere else. I, I, I have no uh, whatevers, you know. Uh, but this is the this is the newer heater that I purchased uh, March sixth, um, which is more expensive, uh, but it's the Fluval one and it has worked so far. So let's see, I bought it on March 6th. It's now June, so it has lasted at least four months. Uh, it has been operating properly. I've been testing the water. I've been temperature testing the water with the laser um, with the laser tester. It's been accurate. Uh, it has a digital screen on it that tells you what's going on. Uh, they've worked quite well. They are expensive. Uh, the Fluval ones are much more expensive. Um, with the... With the Eheim heaters, I found them to. Now, if I say that they're if I say that they're bulletproof, that's kind of wrong. But I have found them to work very, very well and very accurately if you have them tuned properly. Now, tuning them properly can be a little bit of a pain, um, but uh, if you can get them if you can get them correctly, they they've lasted me a really long time. Um, the little bit of upside on them is that they have a pretty good warranty too. If they screw up, you can take them back and and uh, get them another one. Uh, let's see. Hey moderators, I need a little help. I think I accidentally blocked someone. I have no idea who, except it's a mod. YouTube told me just so. How do I reverse this? I can't even see moderators anymore. From Barbara Jackson. How did Barbara block somebody? Hmm. That's weird. Um, maybe the moderators can figure it out. I don't see anybody having been blocked, Barbara. So maybe it was a different channel or something. Oh, did... Um, huh. Need a little help. I think I accidentally blocked someone. I have no idea who, except it's a mod. 
YouTube just told me so. How do I reverse this? I can't even see moderators. Oh, maybe she did it on her own channel. Um, you may have... Um, It might have, um, what's the word, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? You may have blocked somebody from your channel. Uh, if you actually go into, um, your control panel, you can go in there and, um, look that up. I forget the exact pattern of how to do it. Let me see. Let me see if I can't, uh, oh yeah, here's how you do it. Okay, hold on, let me, ah, whoops. <laughs> uh, uh, yikes. Let's see here. Let me... All right, hold on a second. Let me just... I'm going to do it over here on this this computer. This will be much easier. So you want to uh, right-click your... Or you want to click your icon in the upper right-hand corner. And you want to go to Creator Studio. Then you want to go click on the Community icon. Then from the Community Settings... Or from the Community icon, it opens up. Then you can go to Community Settings. Uh, community settings will show you your moderators, your approved users, and your hidden users, blocked words, blah, 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 block links, all that kind of stuff. Um, got a bunch of, I got a bunch of people in my, my blocked users. Yeah, there's all those guys. Yeah. Uh, so if you go right in there, you'll be able to find it out. And, um, if you ever want to unblock somebody, yeah, that's where you'd go to find it. Um, the only way, oh, I don't know if I want to say this out loud on the show, but, uh, yes, you can block people just like on YouTube. You basically want to, if somebody's harassing you or doing whatever, just block them. It will hide their comments. It'll hide whatever they're replying to or however they're interacting with you. Just go ahead and block them and be done with it. That's my advice. It's the best way to go. I know occasionally I mentioned, um, Occasionally, I, I, I mention negative comments and stuff like that because I think they're funny, <laughs> personally. That's why I bring them up because I think they're pretty funny, and, uh, you know, that's kind of the thing. But, uh, hey, let's get to the video segment, you guys. Video segment, video segment. It played all the way till some point in time. We got to start it over. Is this the right... Oh, no. You guys, I got the wrong video segment here. Hold on a minute. Don't worry. I can do this. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Doot, 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 doot. Here we go. I almost played you guys the video segment from last week. That's no good. All right, let's go like this. We got to resize it up. Then we go down here. Um, we got to remove that one. Then we got to go here and like that. Oh my gosh, you guys, there we go. Okay. All right. So we got that sorted out. Now we'll be able to watch actually this show uh, content. Zombie, but uh, let's answer some questions here from the chat real quick. Uh, Zombie Drummer is asking 300 watt heater sufficient for a 125. Tank is in the basement, so it gets cold in the winter. Um, yes, I would definitely go with the 300-watt heater on anything that's over, um, realistically, 90 gallons. Anything over that, for sure, go with the 300-watt heater. Um, if it's possible, I would almost go double just to just to make it easier on the heaters uh, to maintain the proper temperature. If it's going to be real cold, uh, I would almost go with two. What is this nonsense? Ah, uh, you guys, I just got spam. I just got a spam email. Can I... I don't even know... How are we supposed to live with all this spam, you guys? It's just ridiculous. Um, but... Uh, with anything over 90 degree or, or 90 gallons, I, I would try to double it up if you can, if that's something that you can do. And uh, um, hopefully 
get that together. Nathaniel John says, hey, fish fam, I'm scrubbing out a tank I used for a quarantine. I got some serious lime scale buildup on the sides. Any tips or tricks or is it just a razor blade and elbow grease? Um, you're definitely going to want to go with vinegar uh, for sure. If you got the lime scale, um, that's going to be your best bet. It doesn't necessarily work out all that great. Um, what kind of tank is it? Uh, if it's an acrylic tank, you could use CLR, but uh, I would never use CLR on a glass tank because you have a chance to um, react with the silicone uh, in a bad way or the possibility that the silicone might uh, absorb some of the CLR. Um, but if it was an acrylic tank, I'd probably use a little bit of that. Uh, but the best luck I've had was um, with vinegar. And it, vinegar is not all that helpful. It, to, to be honest with you, it will help, but it's not all that helpful. It sounds like if you're going to use a razor blade, uh, that it's a glass tank. So I would, um, yeah, bleach isn't going to do anything for you. But yeah, I would definitely be going with vinegar uh, is the way to get it off. That's for sure. Uh, next fish room says vinegar and very sharp safety razors on glass tanks works well. Yeah, I would almost get one of those flat holders um, for removing graffiti and stuff. If you go to the hardware store, you can go, hey, I've got, I need to scrape glass and I, I need uh, the holder for the razor blade. Um, they have those there. Those work best because it helps hold it really flat and right in place. And uh, that in my experience has, has definitely worked out the best for sure. Uh, in, in my days, um, as far as, this, <clears throat> as far as a razor blade scraper goes, that's going to be the best route and buy extra blades and change them frequently. Um, that's going to be quite a bit <clears throat> the best way to go. Um, let's see here. Oh, anyone else in the comments, my stuff anyways, uh, using the YouTube to drop a little 30 second things. Uh, what? I'm confused. Uh, Dank Tank says, Hey, Joel, I'm assuming you have Amazon Prime. Check out the documentary Save Our Seahorses. I'm sure your lady would enjoy it too. Yes, I will check that out. Um, let's see here. At, uh, Oh, yeah. Rebecca says, uh, it just blocks them from commenting on your stuff. It doesn't make them go poof like Facebook does. Um, yeah, actually, one of the funny features about uh, YouTube is that um, when you block people from your channel, they can still comment and everything. It's just no one can see it. <laughs> so if anybody stayed long enough in the show, you guys can, uh, you guys can start to understand the benefit of um, why I think it's hilarious that people want to troll my channel um, because they they think they're posting and commenting on stuff um, but it's just invisible so that's pretty funny because it's like the ultimate payback for the people that just can't contain themselves and mind their P's and Q's on the internet because they're still investing their time right they're still investing their time and energy in in um, trying to blast people, but they don't know it's not showing up. <laughs> it's pretty funny. A uh, quick note here. It is super hot out today. It's like 90 degrees out today. <laughs> it suddenly got super hot. And it's kind of crazy. Uh, but we did have a super chat here that I forgot to hit up uh, from the other Bob, a.k.a. Bob Kaler. What's up, my man? $10. It's a bright yellow super chat. What's up, dude? Uh, he says the German fish store vid was one of your best. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. I. All right. Not only is it a super chat. Of the $10 variety, but it's also a compliment. All right. I don't know how to deal with compliments, you guys. I always kind of get weird and don't really know how to say thank you, but I'm making a concerted effort to be able to just say thank you at certain points in time. Um, but as you guys can see here in the video, hopefully the video has kind of run through um, 
run through enough that people are kind of getting the impression that, wait a minute, this guy's had some Ludwigia going on in the back of the 240 for a long time, and what's the deal with this, right? Um, you know, I did title it Aquascaping with Ludwigia today. We had a couple of impatient people that popped in and, and uh, wanted me to answer the question right away for them. And I'm sorry that I didn't get to it super quick for you all. Um, but this is a long format show where we do go back and forth. And, um, you know, um, at some point in time, maybe I'll do a short video for you. The easiest way to do that, if you're a really impatient person and you don't have a lot of time on your hands, um, you know, the easy way to do that would just be to get on Patreon and be like, make me a Ludwigia video. <laughs> Is that too honest for you guys? It's a little bit honest, right? But... You know, that honestly is kind of the way that it goes, you know, just like, I need a Ludwigia video right now. Uh, just be like, well, you go on Patreon right now and you can get that too. You can hit the buy now button. You know what I mean? You can do that. It's all good. It's like eBay. You can hit the buy now button. It's something you can do. Um, but super appreciative of everybody that's hanging around here. Uh, as you guys know, uh, that have been around for a long time, Ludwigia is definitely my favorite stem plant just the many 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 varietals that ludwigia comes in um it's enough reason it's just enough reason to be like this is your favorite stem plant just like me you could be just like me and have favorites it's fine it's not a big deal it's plants you guys their feelings aren't going to get hurt if you say hey this is my favorite plant the plants are cool with it they don't mind I talked to them, and they said it was cool. But there are so many varietals, varietals of Ludwigia, and even to the point where um, under different conditions you can grow the same kind of Ludwigia and have them react differently and come out in a different way. Uh, I wanted to show you guys what happens when you take some really, really, really sad pieces of Ludwigia and start propagating them and how you can propagate them. Uh, I think if some people could recall some months ago, I came home with some little orphan pieces of Ludwigia that hadn't sold from the store. Uh, from the aquarium co-op is where I got them from uh, and they had put them on the bargain basement shelf and then it didn't even sell from the bargain basement shelf um, and so I bought it from Robert right um, who was like look man I I'm, I'm gonna throw this away basically it's got like one more day out here uh, and I was like cool man super discount sup bro super discount bro he was cool enough to super discount it and i said you know what i'm gonna do my darndest to grow this a little bit this is a little bit of ludwigia repens you can tell that from uh the fairly oval shape um and just kind of the way that it grows the closer it gets to the light it's getting redder and redder and redder as it's down in the tank it's nice bright green which as you guys know is my favorite favorite color so if it does both bright red and bright green guess what it's probably going to end up in my favorite category um, another reason i really really enjoy the ludwigia is that you can grow it pretty short and trim it aggressively and keep it nice and low or you can let it get nice and leggy and it will fill up the back of the background just in these amazingly cool ways you get it to grow up uh, through the driftwood and it makes these little these beautiful little spots of color and everything as they kind of grow up and grow through. And that is just wildly entertaining to me. Now, another reason why it's pretty much uh, a lot of my favorite, one of my favorite plants is that it is super easy to propagate. It's actually um, quite easy to deal with propagation wise. Uh, at the very beginning of the video, which I'm going to go back to here. Let's see where I'm doing it right here. Time to go to the whiteboard, you guys. Yes. Yes. I finally, I've been waiting for a reason to engage the whiteboard. And you all are here to witness the whiteboard mayhem. We love it. Is it our favorite thing? Maybe it's not our favorite thing, but it's it's kind of up there. You know what I mean? It's, it's pretty good. I got to move the chat over there. All right. Um, as you could maybe see, I don't know. I didn't realize like how, how did this get kind of blown out a little bit? Um, 
Well, the video doesn't quite have the clarity I was hoping for because my hand isn't really in focus, but so this is the stem right here. These little nodes right here are speaking to me. They are speaking to me. These little nodes that are popping off here from the top, right? Now, one of the big reasons we're looking for those, that means that this is going to start laterally propagating out this direction. This is north, this due north right here. That's where it's growing up. Uh, let's put our little north, right? And it's going to start growing out laterally, which means this is a great time to go ahead and trim it. Uh, it's going to start sending out some aerial roots, right? Which if, uh, oh, here's the problem. I have to, I have to turn off the whiteboard, then click this, then turn that to start going again. Um, but I got to turn the whiteboard back on. As you can see, these aerial roots right here, these are all these little roots that are hanging down, coming off there, right? So this, this piece of Ludwigia has grown all the way from down here, all the way up to where my hand is sitting. And I don't know what that looks like now, so let's just delete that. Um, and over time, right, we've, uh, we've certainly got a good section here. There we go. That's a good shot. We can, we can work with this that where we have aerial, aerial roots right here, we have aerial roots down in this area here, and we have all these new little bud leaves coming up here, which means it's time to cut it right here and right here, where my fingers are right now, and cut it right here, and we'll end up with not one, not two, but three awesome Ludwigia plants, not to mention most likely a couple more, because once these pieces are clipped, you can just stuff them into the substrate. Grab your grab your tweezers, your tweezer twazzle tweezer tongs, and stuff them right into the substrate, and the plant will do all the work for you because it'll send some roots out. It's already got the roots coming out, and on top of it, it will start growing from that little cut segment. And you can see here, I'm cutting right where it's split down there see that where it's split into two plants that's i'm cutting right below that because that is where i'm going to divide this into uh three different pieces now that very middle section is actually going to go in my sump and i'm going to allow that to grow and i'm going to cut plants off of it i'll be making a video about that later on highlighting exactly what i'm doing with that it's definitely one of those propagation things that becomes confusing but this plant is so easy to propagate, you can accidentally cut this thing wrong, right? You can cut it wrong and just plant the tops. Even if you cut it in the wrong spot, 99% of the time, you're going to be growing a new plant. You're going to have made one plant into multiple plants, which is pretty much the name of the game, right? When you're looking to try and uh, fill out a tank, maybe you got a crazy 240 gallon tank like I do and you're trying to fill it up with plants and you spend all your money on lights. So instead of buying a ton of plants, guess what you want to do? You want to grow them out. You want to fill this thing in with stuff that you grew mainly because I didn't grow any led lights. You know what I mean? I didn't grow any led lights out of the ground and uh, I had to pay with them with the monies. And so my goal here is to keep propagating this Ludwigia until I get to a point where I could go to somebody like Bentley Pascal, my guy, Bentley Pascal, and I'd be like, Hey, buddy, I got some super sweet Ludwigia. Bro, you want to make a swap a Rooney? You want to make a little trade, huh? And then he'd probably be like, Yo, I don't need any of those plants, but I'll make a trade anyhow because I'm super cool Bentley Pascal, right? <laughs> Um, but at the very least, you definitely have something that is, is at least a usable item that has value that you may or may not be able to trade with somebody. Maybe you could sell it to your local fish store. Um, all you'd have to do is just order up, uh, some plant weights, uh, the lead. They're not actually lead you guys. So don't freak out. Uh, the, the plant weights aren't actual aquarium. Plant weights. Oh my God, he's typing like a wizard. He's so wizarding. Um, wow, those are like super expensive on Amazon. Hold on, hold on. Super. How many is this? 
Well, how many's in here? Come on now. I don't. How many's inside? Weird. I don't know. That's bizarro. Uh, bump, 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 bump. What do we got here? Why? Why is this super? Hold on a minute here. What did I put in? That's weird. Well, there's some plant anchors right there. Okay. These ones are super expensive for some reason. I don't know why, but this is basically what you're looking for. Um, so if you're somebody that is propagating your plants, right, and you're like, oh, I need to take them to the to the plant store. Don't worry about getting pots. Don't worry about getting rock wool. Just get the weights and bundle up like five or six stems with a little weight. Bring those in all bagged up, and any store will just be totally cool with what you're doing. Uh, there might be a cheaper... Um, there's probably a cheaper lead weights on Amazon, but it seems weird that it's 10 bucks for 25 of them. That, that doesn't sound right, but, um, there might be a better place that you can look for them, but that at least gives you an idea of, of, you know, what you're looking for, you know, instead of, uh, just going like, I don't know what he's talking about. This is weird. Um, so you'd be able to take those into the, to the store, but, the propagation to me is is most important uh, for those two reasons. A, you're going to fill up the tank, which is that's what you want. You want a tank that's full of plants looking good, big and green or red or whatever color you're going for. Maybe it's a Dutch tank and you have every color in there. Um, and uh, so... And the other thing would be that you have something to barter with. You definitely have something of value and something of value that's growing and growing and growing. It's like putting some money in a high interest savings account. You're like, well, dude, I put $100,000 in there and I came back 20 years later. And now I got $300,000. I must be super rich guy. And I'm going to go ahead and buy myself a uh, camera lens or something, which that's not me because I, I don't have that. But I do have the plant version of that. You know what I'm talking about? The plant version of that is something that I could probably actually put 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 into place. Uh, what's going on? I used to feel the same way. Just started talking and everyone is wonderful. Oh, I always wanted to say... Oh, Crystal Hazlitt. Here we go. Crystal Harrison. Crystal Hazlitt. We got two crystals in the chat. Oh, that's cool. I like it. Uh, Crystal Hazlitt said, I always wanted to say something, but I usually never do because I'm too nervous. Uh, but I just wanted to say that all of you guys make me smile. So thank you for that. With the heart emoji. Thank you for the heart emoji. I, I dig. I might be old, but I dig emojis. I, something wrong with me. I don't know. Kind of old for that, right? Or something. I don't know. Uh, but thank you, Crystal and Crystal Harrison, uh, both of the crystals. Uh, I definitely appreciate it. Um, I definitely uh, appreciate everybody that shows up here in chats. Um, I would say that one of the funny things is, is that I was looking at the analytics the other day, and I'm back down to only 8% women watching the show, you guys, which is, I don't know what to say about it. I don't know what to say about it because if I watch, if I'm, if I'm like watching the chat, it seems like we're 50-50. But if I look at my analytics, it says there's just not a lot of women that like to watch whatever it is I'm doing here, which is weird because, like I said, if I watch the chat, it seems like we're 50-50. It seems like we're a normal cross-section of the humanity, right? But if I look at the analytics, man, it's 8% 8, 8 to 92%. 92% male, 8% female, which is a little unsettling. But I don't know what to do about it, and... Uh, just hopefully, uh, hopefully I'm occupying a space that seems good for everybody. I don't know. I mean, hopefully, hopefully we just continue rocking and rolling and having a good, having a good time here. You know, um, let's Gil could set a, he could reset up his account. So he counts as a woman. <laughs> that is weird. <laughs> That's weird, dude. But one thing that crossed my mind is that I was wondering that when you set up your account, right? Cause you put in that, like, because when you, when you set up your account, you go male or female, like you just click on a thing. And I'm almost wondering that like if how chaotically, uh, oftentimes chaotically bad 
the internet is for women, um, I wonder if they just there's a possibility that they just click the male thing. I don't know. Maybe I'm totally off base and just being weird. I don't know. Um, Aquatic Ma is asking: Is there a general gender neutral percentage? I haven't seen a general gender gender neutral percentage show up yet uh, in the analytics, but I do expect over time that at some point in time that will show up um, because I think it would be. Ooh, Rebecca has a great point here. I'm guessing that a bunch of us just didn't set up our gender in YouTube somewhere. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's the deal. <clears throat> no, but I've I've looked at I've looked at big female uh YouTuber analytics and theirs are, you know, they'll be like 60/40 female to male. So um I don't know. It's just I don't I I don't know. It was just something I noticed, and I thought it was weird. Uh, but we got a super chat from my boy, Mass Aquariums, of the $20 variety. Well, thanks, thanks, Mike. That's Angry Mike from Mass Aquariums. Uh, throwing down a $20 super chat, just saying, keep up the great work, Joel. These are like the easiest super chats to deal with today, because you guys are just throwing me compliments on them. Like the zombie drummer here, who, by the way, upped his Patreon today. Which, thanks, man. That's really cool. Um, it's, I, I don't have a better way to like explain that's really cool when people support the show, I guess. Maybe I should come up with something that would be funner. But um, he says, uh, me too. Me too, bro. With all the cool emojis. He's got this, the shrimp emoji, the snail emoji, turtle emoji, monkey emoji, the dog, poodle, water buffalo, now the Santa one, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I got mixed emotions on the Santa one. I don't know. Uh, but if you haven't checked out Mass Aquariums, definitely check them out. You could actually find uh, one of our podcasts on there at some point in time if uh, you want to go trolling through and find the one that has my face on it. We had a hour, little hour long podcast chit chat. Uh, if you want to check that out at some point in time, that'd be cool. If you don't want to check it out, then don't do it. But check out Mass Aquariums. He's got a much bigger channel than I do, and he's doing super good. And he has a My Aquarium Box. If you haven't checked out My Aquarium Box, check that out for sure, too. You guys, speaking of podcasts... <clears throat> speaking of podcasts, you guys, I uh, the Aquarist Podcast uploaded a podcast with yours truly, me, on it today. Um, go ahead and check that out if you get a chance. Maybe one of the moderators has a link to the Aquarius podcast and, and uh, the newest one. Uh, either, otherwise, you can just look up Aquarius podcast in the YouTube or Google or whatever. You'll be able to find it on any of the podcast stuff. Uh, you'll be able to find it on YouTube. You can subscribe to him. Uh, he's definitely got some really cool guests on there. Um, I will say Therese Neal. Uh, that was one of the coolest podcasts I've listened to in a long time. Uh, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to talk to the uh, JBJ people when we go to Interzoo, which is something that I wanted to meant or not Interzoo, uh, Super Zoo, which is the one of the other Interzoo things, um, which is next week. It is not open to the public again. I'm super sorry to be going to a convention that isn't open to the public. It's a buyer's convention. Um, I will do my best to shoot tons and tons of videos this time. Um, because we will be in America. Um, if you guys don't know, we will be myself, Kobe, and Jimmy from Aquarium Co-op. We shall be road tripping all the way to Las Vegas to go to the Super Zoo uh, convention, which I, hopefully I get a chance to talk to the JBJ people while I'm there and check them out and see what's up. Um, and, uh, we're going to be doing all the driving. Uh, we're going to be going to some fish rooms, uh, on the way so that we can film those on the way back. We're going to be going to some really cool fish rooms. Um, 
yeah, I, I'm really excited to do this trip. It, yes, it is going to be a lot of work. There's going to be a lot of road work, a lot of driving, a lot of uh, uh, messaging and getting hold of people and making sure that everything is working properly, uh, going to conventions, running around, filming a ton of stuff. But I am super excited for this road trip. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun uh, on top of the work, you know. Um, so we're going to keep rocking and rolling along, and we're going to be doing that. Uh and we just got a super chat from one Asterix Aquaria, which is crazy because this is basically one of the things I was going to be talking to, uh, talking about is that have you seen Heiko Blair's crowdfunding campaign to get his entire fish collecting database into an app program for public use? Thoughts? Um, yes, I talked to Heiko Blair while in Germany uh, about this, uh, uh, about the uh, biotope, which is right here. Uh, hold on, I got the link right over here where is it where to go boop boop let me find it let me find it uh well maybe i i don't know maybe i closed the window yep i think i closed the window uh but either way uh talk to heiko and his wife uh about the funding or uh, his uh his database that he is working on uh it's a very exciting project uh I'm pretty excited about it. I do have a video coming out with that uh, fairly soon. It's basically the intro to the final Germany video. Uh, it will be popping up at some point in time. Uh, I did not interview Heiko Blair, but it it um, I think y'all if y'all don't know who Heiko Blair is, go go check it out, figure it out. Uh, but yes, I did spend a lot of time uh, working with the uh, or talking with um, Heiko Blair and his wife. And his daughter was there, his little nine-year-old daughter was running, running amok, super cute daughter. Uh, she was totally fun. She was like skateboarding and stuff. It was awesome. Um, but yes, I, I did meet them, and that project seems to be funded at this point. So um, as far as I know, it's funded. I think they're still taking donations and stuff to help out to try and make it better. Um, but yeah, I definitely know about that i talked to heiko in person and i'm thinking he's going to be at super zoo so i'm going to try and see if we can't do a little interview with them uh but they might not be there i i don't know either i'm not really 100 percent sure who's going to be there uh one asterisk aquarius says oops sorry to spoil your, your video topic oh no it's not a that's never a spoil you guys um spoiler alert i went to inner zoo people know <laughs> Uh, but I do have a, uh, a short part of it that will pop up in a video soon. So if you're super excited about it, um, a little bit of a different coverage from uh, what Corey uploaded um, uh, on his, uh, his Germany video. So uh, I didn't want, to, um, didn't want to spoil it for anybody. Uh, but there's Dan Squires just poked, uh, posted uh, Heiko Blair's uh, site. You can check that out. Uh, Mass Aquarium saying that... Uh, where did he go? Where did he go? Happy Mike. He's not angry Mike. He's happy Mike. Okay. Got it. Um, yeah, his uh, uh, Mass Aquarium's Mike has the has the nickname of Angry Mike because he does his um, he does his uh, his gripe videos, which which was funny the other day because he had, he had posted a <laughs> he posted the thumbnail video. Uh, he was he was getting upset about the thumbnail game that's going on on YouTube. And um, I appreciate the frustration, but, uh, you know, people that are upset about people utilizing the keywords and the thumbnails and all that kind of stuff, um, I, sorry, you know what I mean? It's, it's sort of one of those things that, like, you know, um, when marathon runners started drinking Gatorade instead of water um, and they performed better, it was like that's just how it is now you know that's just the expectation that it is now to have all your ducks in a row and have that stuff going and if you're not doing it you just i don't know there's no one else to blame realistically so um take it with a grain of salt and i i definitely um i definitely do try to make sure that whatever i am clicking on is definitely going to be from from a, cre a creator that i trust and i'm actually willing to uh, spend the time so i guess that's the way that i um, I guess that's the way I navigate it and deal with it. So, uh, all right. So as we head out the door here, I don't even know if I ever really explained too much about Ludwigia, but it is definitely my favorite plant. It's definitely easy to propagate. Hopefully I gave you guys some tips on how to propagate it. Um, 
the okay so i guess maybe i should talk a little bit more about ludwigia why not because we got a couple more minutes here before i gotta go um so let's talk about fertilizers um uh, Fertilizer for Ludwigia is actually really easy. Uh, any kind of liquid comprehensive uh, fertilizer that you're looking for, you don't need to worry about iron. You don't need to worry about uh, too much. You can actually use some pretty simple um, fertilizers. Mine is definitely perked up since I started adding a little bit of uh, Easy Green from Aquarium Co-op. Uh, I definitely recommend to buy a giant jug of it like I did. And by the way, if you guys are looking forward to a video of me talking about Easy Green again, well, there is one coming up this week. So, um, But uh, be aware, it is story time with your buddy, this guy. And it's only like seven minutes long, so it's a much less invest investment of time compared to the podcast but um or whatever the show is called is this show a podcast i don't know um but the fertilizers for it are pretty simple my favorite substrate for it is uh going to be a laterite though um i always like to have some uh some laterite amended to the soil if i am going to be or not the soil the substrate if i am going to be uh poking ludwigia in it laterite definitely helps out with uh, grabbing some of those free-floating iron ions that will be in your water, whether you're dosing iron or not, and it just makes it a lot easier to maintain. Uh, you definitely can overdose iron and have a lot of problems, so if, if people are going to go into that and they're kind of a little bit nervous, I would definitely go the route of finding a little bit of laterite, order up a bag, and then use that a little bit to amend the substrate, and that will make your life a million times easier. Or you could do something like order some, order up some liquid iron and just be very careful to follow the instructions if you are adding iron to the aquarium. Uh, that's going to be like big time, big time important. Um, you can certainly overdose it and have like a big time. <sighs> I can't. I can't. I guess, I guess I can't mention that enough. Is that just watch out? You gotta be careful. Uh, with the iron you can certainly overdose it i did it a few times in, in the past and there's really nothing more frustrating than than uh having done something yourself to create the disaster and then you're like Dah, i gotta fix this yeah and uh it's not a great time it's not a great time though uh but laterite makes that iron that little bit of iron supplement super easy and it's not even an issue realistically um rory says wasn't ludwigia a boss in super mario brothers for super nintendo you're darn right of course <laughs> uh foster's fish says too much iron equals staghorn uh as you guys can see i am pulling out a little bit of uh, algae that is in here uh that appears on a closer closer inspection to not be hair algae it's kind of a cladophora um which is kind of the same stuff that uh, Marimo moss balls are out of. Uh, it's kind of typical from this area back here of the aquarium, though, with the low flow. I will I have a tendency to get a little bit of that cladophora algae kind of showing up back in here. Uh, we got kind of low flow and a little bit of directional. Um, we got a little bit of directional light kind of dumping in on some surfaces. Uh, but as you can see, I grabbed my toothbrush and that just is the easiest thing to kind of grab it out, yank it out of there. Just, um, just do this from time to time. That is going to be your, your best way. Make sure to kind of up your, your water changes and then double check, um, what is going on with your potassium. See what's happening with that. And, uh, that will help you, uh, keep it sorted out. Woo. Let's see here. All right. Looks like people are kind of slowing down in the chat because we are coming up and now people are talking about Nintendo and stuff. We are coming up on the end of the show. I want to thank everybody for coming out today. It was, uh, I don't know, it was fun. We started out with story time. We moved on to some answer question time and we moved on to some video time. I think we kind of rounded out the three-part sandwich of the show, I think. And by the way, it is getting super hot in here. That's how I know it's going to be time to end the show because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick that little AC unit I got over there because I got the door closed. And it's, as you can see, I'm starting to get shiny. I'm still in my T-zone here. This is what you call your T-zone. It's starting to get shiny. And uh, 
which means it's getting hot in here. It is getting pretty warm in here. And it's almost coming up on the 5 o'clock hour, which means I've been yammering on for one hour and 50 minutes, which is plenty enough, uh, I think, for a Monday. That's for sure. want to give a special shout-out to the other Bob, a.k.a. Bob Kaler, for your Super Chat, Mass Aquariums for your Super Chat, uh, Zombie Drummer, and One Asterix Aquaria. Thank you very much for your guys' support. Kicking in, chipping in, throw it in the tip jar, try to answer your questions. You know how it goes. Um, one man Aquarius was asking, do you have flower horn fish? Uh, no. And I have no plans on getting flower horn ever. Um, that just is not going to happen. Bald and dangerous says, okay, peeps time for bed. See you later, Dougie. Good to see you. Thanks for coming out. Foster's fish says later, everybody. And I will shall say later to you. Charlie is on the way out. Mayhem's tank says later, Joel. Later, fish fam. Well, thanks for coming out. Samantha Flanagan says make sure it's the toothbrush you use for your teeth. That's right. Always use your toothbrush for your teeth and use your toothbrush for your aquarium. It's pretty smart. Just uh, be sure to clean off all the toothpaste. You don't want that in your in your tank. That's for sure. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming out. Uh, tomorrow is the real fish talk. So it shall be myself and a Kobe. And Jimmy will be all on the reef fish talk. I don't think we have a guest tomorrow or anything like that. But uh, be sure to tune in that and tune into that at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, otherwise, I'll be back here on Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time and Friday. And we'll be hollering at you and letting you know what's up. And we'll have some fun stuff to talk about because I got a whole bunch of fun stuff to talk about. All right. Later. Is there even a button around here? I don't even know, man.